Hi, welcome back. This is Simon Lavender. This is Via Romana. This is a game that actually was nominated for the best Kinder Spiel Prix Award, which is like a child play award for 18 to 13 year olds. It's a game that came out uh, about 10 years ago, same time as Hansa Teutonica, which is an extremely highly rated game that I also highly recommend. And it's a bit of a slightly um, skin down version but having said that um i think that's probably due to the fact that some cards in it and you know a tiny bit of luck you might assume so in terms of luck it's rating it as like a five bluffing as a six strategy as i think it's an eight and roman theme as a 10. so um very nice artwork somebody who played this on wednesday uh, loves the artwork on the board but not necessarily of the people uh, but that's his choice now before i lay out the map it's a root building game whereby we're looking to gain some area control let me show you the back it's nice to actually see the back of the board uh nicely illustrated so as you can see nice big board it's got the um, camera nicely set up so it's uh, visible to see everything and that is all you need to see so the rules in this edition of the game only come in German, but I've got a printout so I can uh, obviously know it in English and know the differences. The only thing, if you happen to get a printout which looks a bit like this, if you see this online, the trouble is it doesn't show you the illustration of how you mark out some routes in the two to three player version of the game. In that version, uh, certain things are locked off just to encourage, um, I guess, interaction. And it's partially because you're gonna have some bonus cards in the box, you have a little player aid, and it's going to tell you what you can do. It's very good, and you'll see when I explain the rules what's going on. You have tokens here, you have milestones, and you're going to have pieces that you place out on here. So I'll place out a few of here as an example. Then you're going to have a bag per colour, so choose who you want to be. And I think for today, I think yellow might stick out quite well. So in each bag, you're going to have 20 milestones. You might recognize this kind of pillar if you've seen any sort of Roman or Roman themed uh, films, or maybe even some games. And you have a fortress. So this fort is also used for victory points. So uh, the only other thing that's in the box other than these uh, secret um, objectives is you chuck in this little standard, which means if you trigger the end of the game, which is once you've placed out a 20th road, then that triggers the end of the game. So when you place out some of these um, uh, places early on in the 2-3 player, of course, you're closer to the end already. So talk to you briefly about these victory points. So you're going to shuffle these face down, give one to each player, and there's always one more of the amount of players anyway. So of course, in a 2-3 player, you're not exactly sure what they're going for. But as an example, you're trying to get two blue uh, forts here. You're trying to get one in green and one in gray. So that's basically how it operates. So that's how you get it. You're gonna have cards as well. Four are gonna to go to each player. You're going to be then putting four out on the display. That's where they take their cards from. A bit like Ticket to Ride, basically. So you're gonna have cards such as these. They're gonna be uh, of each different uh, regions. And also you can see exactly where they go as well. So those go up here. So just grab some of the different colors just to, I don't know, of course it's random anyway but just so you can see the variety. So it's one, two, three, four, and that's the discard pile. And uh, this is basically where you chuck out your um, the road completion signs. So when you look at these things, what you do is you start off the four cards in your hand. So I'll just grab, um, say four, and you can see what I can do. But initially everybody places down a fort wherever they feel like at one of these cities. So say this was uh, my objective, I might stick my fort in i would say orange and it's quite close to blue and stuff like that so everyone sticks their thing out and then what you're going to start doing is you're playing up to three cards so imagine these are my cards i'm going to be playing um either the i'll start with this action because it's uh simpler you can place one card which matches say this route this road there's a blue or an orange card i have one blue card so i can place that so that would go in the discard pile as an example and you place a piece of milestone there. The aim is to complete all the way to here. The benefit of completing all the way to here is if you see here, everything's got a one on it, but it has three there as well. So if I just go through the bag quickly and get out the respective ones, you need a three and a two. So the three and the two go on top of each other like that, and they go here, the same with the rest of the board. 
when this completes, it could be with yellow, it could be with other colors, um, then whoever has the most, that person gets to take one from either this end or from this end. So this goes one to four, so you actually have four, you might want to take it from here. I'll explain why uh, you might not want to be taking these ones in a second. But as you can see, that was one of the actions. So a second action you can do is spend two cards. So I had that one blue, I could have actually spent two blue. Now if I spend two blue, what that means is I can place out two of these for one action. So it's a bit more efficient to a degree because I don't have to wait a turn. I'm close to completing it so someone doesn't take the majority. This counts as well. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you have four, you're going to win it. In places where there are ties, if you're the person who triggers it, i.e. completing, and it's three and you've just placed the third, then you win it. If you trigger it and it becomes even and you're not involved in the tie because you've only placed maybe one and someone else placed three and three, the person to your left, so clockwise, they get it. So you might need to consider if you think they might try and do that to you. But the only time you can play with uh, two is if there's already a fort in place. So until a fort or a milestone is at one of these locations, you can't be then moving outwards from it with two cards. You can only place one. Something else you can do is with those uh, four cards is place wild. So you can place two different things and chug a thing. But of course, it's less efficient because using two instead of one card. And then you've only got a maximum of one action left because you only have three cards, which could in, in, you know, in theory be three actions. It might only be one. It could be two. So when you play a card, you can place, yep, place it here or you can place it here. When you play two, uh, you can place milestones, you can't place one there and you can't place a fort there. If you want to place a fort, you must play two of the same um, colour and of course it has to match where you're going. And I can't go here until I've reached the end of here to do it. So what you can do is once this is completed, so imagine uh, this was completed here or maybe this was here uh, and I've played my cards, so I say I've played three cards, I drop two cards. Now imagine if I've completed here, this is useful because as mentioned, if you've completed uh, a place, and also if you've completed it with a symbol, then if you play one of these symbols, or one of these symbols, it basically means, well, this one in particular, you can go out from here and actually gain, uh, again, placing out two instead of one. So you're placing two instead of just one. So it encourages you to try and connect up uh, other locations, because as soon as you've connected that one, it's, it's more efficient to lead out from it. But, this is, comes onto the scoring of these guys. At the end of the game, you'll score to see if you've reached all four things, and there's definitely interactions, so you're gonna come into some confliction there. But also, if you uh, reach an end, you like I said, you take a, a point from each thing. So if you're starting to connect out and reach out further away, the downside is you end up with uh, fewer points. That's for yourself at the end of the game. But of course, if you took those points anyway, it doesn't matter too much, it's just you'd rather take it up from somebody else. So that's pretty much how the game pans out. Uh, what's quite nice, uh, they don't fit in perfectly, but I think it's because they give out some flats. These basically go in here. So those go here, and uh, once you keep it on a flat piece, it's fine. And that's basically saying that that row's complete. So once you've completely scored this up, you then remove all these, take them back, leave the forts or anything at the end of a city, and then you can see one of those diversion markers is put down. So once they've all gone, and there are fewer of these than there are total uh, road spaces, then that triggers the final round. So if it was the last player in the round to, to play the last one, then that would be the final round. Then you go ahead, scrap your points, and uh, in say a two-player game, we were getting 24 to 26 points. In three-player, somebody managed to get um, all their points without needing any of the bonus points. They didn't get the standard, they didn't get their five-point uh, hidden objective, and they still won. They won with 31 points. So uh, their strategy was to just to go for efficient use of cards. But the downside, of course, is maybe uh, delaying your progress, getting out to other locations and getting bonus points that way. Uh, so yeah, in that game uh, is a three-player game. Other players came second and third. So that is the game. And uh, we'll get on to way in a second. If you have any comments, of course, do uh, pop it down, do a quick run through. But as you can see, it's very self-explanatory. You can actually see the things going down. What else do I have to put away? Checking these things. 
and these again you can see easily they're proper parts. These have all gone in one bag and it was pimped to put them like that but that is because everything is laid out in the game to leave them all together apart from explanation there's no other need. But no it's very thinky to a degree but it's very fast to play. It plays in 45 minutes and that's around thinking where do you want to stick something? Do you want to uh, try and trigger these bonuses? And you can interpret it that you know if someone triggers this laurel leaf and you've already got a laurel leaf of a different color then i think it's valid that you can then play that that way as well there's a variant with two players that isn't in the rules whereby you take out so this parts of this are blocked off you take out some respective oranges you take out uh some of the cards which don't actually give you that extra action it just speeds up play and you're going through the deck more effectively to then get on to better stuff you do go through the deck in case you're thinking about um that and when you reach seven cards, um, you then you still draw up two cards. So it's a hand limit of seven, but it's the beginning of your turn that you then discard down. In the expert variant, uh, it's a hard limit of seven, so you can't then uh, change that around. So it depends if uh, you want to consider that. But uh, for quick, pretty much light game, it's uh, it does the job. Definitely keen to play it at a four, and. Uh, yeah, it's um, the designer. He has made some other games. He he's actually the illustrator as well, so that's quite cool. But um, Boone, of course, if you've uh, you might well then see a video from me from Legends of Andor, Michael Menzel, one of the greatest um, board game illustrators. He also um, designed that and uh, was the person responsible for uh, illustrating it as well. So having spent years doing illustrations he went and did that and it's been a great success so i'll just tell you the um the the last um variant and that is around dangerous ties so dangerous ties is around the fact that if you happen to complete a route and there's a tie and as i mentioned if you're not involved in actually having the most in that area it goes clockwise in the that variant you don't give the points to the other person which i think actually makes a lot of sense. I don't think you really need to be focusing on, on that. But uh, yeah, for a two to four player game, in a game that takes under an hour, I think it's a great sort of intro kind of gateway game, but uh, I'm not sure if you're gonna find many copies new, at the very least. But that is Vera Mana, and now we're gonna look into seeing what you're gonna to have to lug around. So nice bright box, Vera Mana comes in at 1101 grams. Thank you very much. I'll be doing some more videos today, so by all means keep a lookout on those. Uh, if you're subscribing, you'll get them notified straight away. Thank you very much. Goodbye.